I think I want to name this mukbang when your family literally cares nothing about you. That's what I'm going to name it. That way it's going to get some views and they're going to go, what the hell's going on with Barbara again now? <laughs> You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. My name is Barbara and for over a decade I've been teaching viewers and subscribers how to cook authentic dishes from my home country of Belize and many other delicious dishes from basic ingredients. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. It's because these people, whenever they buy a burger bread, let me lay this down out the way. A hot dog bread, they buy the one with the seeds. They know I can't handle the seeds. Why? Why, Jesus? They don't care. Hey guys, let me show you first of all what we're gonna be eating. This is stupid. You know how better, better one of this? Yeah, it's not about about not getting enough. It's about it's not coming out like the ketchup. See, the, the ketchup. It's it's a um an as ah! it's an aesthetic thing. Okay, so let me go ahead and try to get this picture again. Oh, I'm gonna eat that. Shoot, I did what you did at the Sherry Shepherd event. Okay. Snap. Yeah, you did go click, 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 click. All right, good. I made a mess just the when I was squirting. Everything was like spitting. It wasn't coming out nice. So let me go ahead and clean this off so we could do a thumbnail. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Get the hair back out the way. So it's just a garden salad, the kind that I like to make, and a hot dog. Really should not be eating that with all the sodium, but there's nothing else cooked and i wanted to tape a mukbang for you guys so how y'all doing we have a lot to talk about you notice i've been putting in my little wheelsy commercial into my mukbangs do you have an old clunker that you'd like to sell but you don't want to deal with random strangers showing up at your house contact wheelsy the link is in the description of this video because the bear pantry show is an affiliate so let me tell you what happened our daughter Jada had this old clunker that was giving her trouble for years. Joe, what do they call the clunkers in the least old cars? Bucket. Yes, she had an old bucket <laughs> that was giving her a lot of trouble and there came a time when we decided we had to sell it. So I did a Google search, found this company, Wilsey. I filled out everything online even though I was a bit nervous. I also did another Google search and found some great reviews and they gave me a free guaranteed offer online. I procrastinated and left it alone all night and so the next day somebody from the company contacted me and they told me that the offer was guaranteed it's not just a quote it was an offer they're located in all 50 states so they could go pick it up from california uh free transfer fees free towing and they would come within 24 to 48 hours they came within four hours no trouble guys they paid out cash all right so don't let nobody tell you oh they came with some fake checks that's what people have been telling me in my comments it's a lie they paid out cash and they fill out the appropriate paperwork. You could screenshot it with your phone and then you take your little pink slip, you know, the top part or whatever down to the DMV and you have no trouble dealing with people wanting you to put the stuff in their baby mama name and all kind of stuff. <laughs> Look, contact Wheelsy, but use the link that's in the description because that's how Bear Pantry Show will get the credit for it, okay? Because I've been making some little affiliate money over there. It's not a whole lot yet, $20 here, $30 there, but it's adding up, you know? Every time I see another stream of income that I open start to trickle in some money, I start to de devote some love and attention to it. So, Joe's not eating with me today. Why? He hungry. So he ate his hot dog already. Joe doesn't know what it's like to suffer for his art. And I guess it's because this is not his art. <laughs> this is my art. He said, I can't wait for you. I taped probably six or seven Amazon videos today from all my birthday gifts. Why y'all didn't tell me? Barbara, are you okay? So he was choking. Barbara, did you record any of those, um, what you call it, reviews for the gifts that you got? Child, I remember that last night when I went to bed, I said, today, today. Mm-hmm. Well, for one of them, well, for two of them, it was outside in some winter boots and a winter shirt <laughs> in the heat. 100 degrees of idle that bile, okay? Boiling. Joe said, my head's burning. <laughs> Did you go there with your hat? 
And like country Joe's up complain, man. Mm-hmm. And so remember when you had that shop? I was burning up in that shop for 15 years. Suck it up for this. Uh-huh. So I noticed that when Joe and I go ride on the bike trail, we have a lot of really good conversations. And I'm like, we should do this on a podcast. We should talk about this in a mukbang. But then it never happens because by the time I get ready, I set up for the mukbang. And this wasn't even a lot of setup because this was already set up today to do the talking heads for Facebook. By the time I set up for the mukbangs, Joe, he hungry, he don't want to do it. And he's like, I don't remember what we talked about. I'm like, oh God, help me Jesus. So I put mustard, ketchup, and relish just now and the stuff was like just squirting. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm. I like the tart of the mustard and then the sweet of the relish and the sweet of the ketchup. Y'all know ketchup has sugar in it, right? Mm -hmm. So, Joe and I were talking on the bike trail today about these darn pastors. Don't get me wrong. I know there are a lot of good pastors, a lot of great pastors, a lot of great reverends and priests and whatever, elders, whatever. But these ones that talk about money are the ones we were talking about. Now, I like money just like the next person. I like money just like the next pastor. I like money, okay? The Bible didn't say money was the root of all evil. It says the love of money. But there's another pastor out there, a bishop, that says it's the lack of money that's the root of all evil. I like that one better. I wish I could steal that phrase from him and put it on a shirt. For real, for real. Um, honestly, if I'm going to go to a church, I like to go to a church where the pastor is doing well, where he's affluent, successful. But I want to see his whole church doing well too, not just him or her. You know? I feel like if it's only the pastor that's rich, he's getting rich off the people. No, Mike Murdoch, you might see, you might have seen a mukbang, I think Josh and I did it. When we talk about Mike Murdoch, Mike Murdoch always get mad when poor people say, these people, these preachers get rich by fleecing the poor. And he says, how we can get rich by fleecing you if you're poor? You can't give us nothing. But he know he's tricky. Because that's how it works. My little $2, $10, $50, $100, whatever it is that you can give to them, it racks up. It's just like the Amazon affiliate, well not affiliate, influencer stuff that I do. If Amazon sell a 175 bike basket for, do how much was those bike baskets? Like 60 bucks? No, I think it was more than that. I think it was like 59, 60 bucks. Let, okay, let's say $60. If they sell 175 for $60 and they make $3,000, well, they didn't make that, but that's the cost of selling it, right? The, the value. And they pay me $48 out of that. Now, that looked like a little bit. That $48 looked like, are you okay, honey bunch? Right. What are you eating while you're choking? Something tickling his tonsil. They said they give me $48 off of that $3,000 sale. That might look like a little bit, right? $48 whole dollars. I only made the video once. I don't have to be too intricate about the video. I don't have to hit 7, 8, 16 points. I just tell a story. That's how I do my Amazon influencers videos. I always tell a story. If people don't like to hear a story, then they go on to somebody else to see what they're talking about the product, right? I'm not going to change my style because I like the style that I've developed in doing my Amazon videos. You guys like my earrings? I recently got these for my birthday. I had them on my Amazon wish list and a subscriber picked them up for me. Hey guys, Barbara here from the Bear Pantry Show that can be seen on YouTube and Facebook. Well, a friend saw these and decided to get this for my birthday. I didn't even have it on my wish list. I absolutely love it because my husband, Joe, and I are avid bicyclists. So I love the theme. I like that the necklace is really heavy. 
I like, well, not heavy to be annoying though, right? But it's thick. And then I like that the bike is big and in the two little wheels, it has two hearts for me and Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so look at it. I feel so special. I like wearing unique things because I like people to ask me about it. Like, where'd you get that, you know? So I love my set, all right? It, it wasn't gonna be a set, but now it is. So pick up one of these guys if you want to give somebody something unique, somebody that rides a you know, bike for a living or just for fun, just go ahead and pick up one of these and tell them what Barbara from the Bear Pantry Show sent ya. Some people get real technical. Oh, the shoes could do this, the camera could... Child, I tell you a story as to why I bought the product. I feel like when I watch other people do reviews and they tell me the story about why they needed the product because a product, first of all, has to solve a problem, right? Or else you won't buy it. My cookbooks solve the problem of you having to buy some complicated cookbook. You know what I mean? It solved that problem. So, um, when I say about marketing, people don't buy a drill because they want a drill. They buy a drill because they want to make a hole or screw in something, right? That's why they buy a drill. Other than that, they wouldn't buy a drill. So the thing has to solve a problem. So I talk about why I needed to buy it. Like if I bought this light, why did I need to buy this light when I have umpteen other lights I could buy? Why did I buy that bike basket over another bike basket? And then I tell the story about I did buy another one. I didn't like it because I didn't. Blah, 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 blah. And I tell the story. So that's what these preachers do. We always have some story to tell you. So they could get you to give. No, don't get me wrong, I love giving. I believe in sowing and reaping. I believe everything is the seed. I believe even you listening to me on this video is a seed. I believe nothing is a seed. And a seed of nothing gives you a harvest of nothing. I really do believe that. But I feel like these preachers do everything to make you motivationally give, right? If you notice in church, the minute you visit a church, their main goal is to make you a member, right? Because as a member, you're more likely to go to the services. It's just like with YouTube, I want you to become a subscriber because you can be a subscriber and not watch any of my content. But as a subscriber, you're more likely to watch. You're more vested, right? Same thing with the church. If you become a member, you're more likely to go. If you're in the pew, you're more likely to give. If you're home, you're less likely to give. It's like, they can't see me. I ain't giving nothing. Well, what Joe said on the bike trail today is like, why is it whenever the preachers need money, they go to the members. But when the members need money, the, th the preacher tell them to go to God. <laughs> so, so I was telling you guys about the little bit that, that adds up. I got sidetracked with Amazon and so on. But that I don't like when Mike Murdoch say that. That he can't get rich off of poor people because they have nothing. Every little bit counts and it adds up. And that's how they get rich. You know what I mean? Joe, do you agree with me, baby? I don't know if you can hear me. I think he has his head going on. Oh my God. We're going to come back to the preachers. Put a pin in it right now. Jada made this dinner yesterday. I told Jada that I wanted noodles like ramen so you know went to the store and bought the ramen it's just the noodles and it comes with a packet of thing that you put so i didn't want that packet of thing because that stuff's gonna have a lot of msg gonna get me sick so she looked up some video on tiktok and she said i'm gonna make this and i told her i'm not really feeling that it's this thing where she put the spices from the noodles with two egg, two raw egg, some mayonnaise, 
and I know if she put some more stuff in there and some of the water from boiling the noodles the starchy water and she made like a creamy thing you know I like I like eggs that are um, soft boiled and I like eggs that are over easy um, I don't like sunny side up eggs I, I don't want the yolk to cook all the way but it, it should cook a little bit but if it's runny I'm okay I just don't like to see that white I, I can't deal with egg white it looks like mucus I can't so when I saw her crack that raw egg in there beat that up I'm like is she gonna fry this child the hot water she said cooked it and don't get me wrong I know you could eat raw egg a lot of people say you can't but my uncle used to eat it all the time he, he was fine until he was like 70 <laughs> so anyway. That wasn't for me. It was hot in there. She cooked some beef to go with it. The beef was like medium rare. I don't like, call me uncouth, call me uncultured, call me anything you want to call me, but I cannot stand pink looking meat, even if it's beef. It's just the way we're raising beliefs. Um, after 56 years I can't change I see that pink meat I'm like oh, oh, oh. I'm like I see why people become vegetarian or vegan Ooh. the thing about looking nice you know she and Joshua ate it up she made a bowl for Joe I don't think Joe knew that it was raw eggs <laughs> she said it had water cook it I made a reel out of it. You might see it here on the page, a short or a reel. I'm definitely going to put that on my Facebook today. No. Mm. Anyway. What I ended up doing was boiling my pack of noodles, cut up some of the beef, and boil it with the noodles. So the pink went away. Joe had some beef that he made the other day that I ate. And me and Joshua were doing the mukbang from Arby's. So I put a little piece of that up with a little bit of the gravy. Not much, like a teaspoon of the gravy. Just to like move it around in the, um, in the noodles. And then put the shrimp. And a little bit of that water from the pasta. A little bit. Just to get it wet up. That thing was so good. I enjoyed I think I want to do it again today. I think when I'm done with this, me and Joshua are going to go to the store. We're going to buy some more package of the noodles and maybe some more beef. I'm going to come back and cook the beef. I want the way I want to cook the beef. I want to make my own broth. I want to have it like in a broth. And I'll make another. But maybe we'll do a mukbang on it if I do it. I think I'll do it. Mm -mm -mm. I haven't driven in so long. I think I'm gonna drive today. Mm hmm. Well, Joe likes to drive, so I let him drive. I don't like driving. And Joshua definitely doesn't want to drive the Tahoe. It's too big. It has that bike thing on the back. Anyway. Let me tell you something that happened to the neighbors across the street. So I don't know if you guys remember. I did a few live events, whatever, where I talk about a man that was setting up residence in front of their house. So he gone. Tell me why two nights ago somebody came and parked over her driveway. If this is her driveway, they park over the driveway that way. Not in. She couldn't get out. She couldn't come in. And I don't know what they do. I'm like, call the police. No, call her. Ask me. Me don't know who that. So, my, my camera pick up the dude. The dude parked the car, get out, went in the back seat to pick up something, slammed the car, put on the club on the. Who still has a club? Put on the club on the steering wheel and walked down the street. That was it for the night. He didn't leave till 8 the next morning. And then people trapped in their own yard. They're stupid because I may call the police. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come back to these speeches. So every time you join our church, you become a member. The first thing they tell you in the Kojic church, the Kojic stands for Church of God in Christ. Is they want you to work in the vineyard, right, babe? Mm -hmm. well, what vineyard? They have wine vineyard. <laughs> and so let me tell you a story. When when they they kind of like, I wouldn't say they forced us because they didn't hold a gun to our head, but they kind of convinced us to become members. I didn't really want to become a member. I wanted to just visit. They want to become a member because I born and raised Anglican or Episcopalian, and I don't think I'll ever change from those beliefs. But we liked the church because it was, you know, um, what happening was happening. So then, instead of become a member, you have to take on class. It was about eight weeks. Every Sunday before church, because I used to have church eight in the morning, I think ten. My never didn't drop. Then noon, and then six in the evening for service. The same people that went to morning service went to evening service. <laughs> I don't think they thought they had more members than they did. Or maybe they knew. So, we had to get there for eight until the, the preacher wife wouldn't go in the service at eight. She would be off into their little kindergarten school, their little preschool that they have, teaching us what we needed to know about the religion. <clears throat> the Azusa Street Revival, the this, the that. I am not in there. Well, I'm gonna save some of that for later for the noodles, I do the noodles. It's bad enough. But they forced her to take this class for eight weeks. But at the end, there was a test. Joe wasn't studying. I made sure I studied because I wanted to pass the test. Joe didn't care. Joe said, no, forced me to take no test to join some church. Ain't crazy? But me, whenever there's a test child, a challenge or a test, I'm right there ready. So, the night before the big exam, both for we bathroom backup. My cousin Effie was visiting. It was in the winter, between Thanksgiving and Christmas time. Our bathrooms are back to back in this house. So, when one toilet is blocked up, the other one's blocked up because they both meet like at a T intersection. And then, um, when the toilet get blocked up, the sink get blocked up, the to everything was blocked up. We had to go to the shop to go use the bathroom, me, Effie, and Jada. So, Joe was up all night trying to get through that blockage with that little, he, he doesn't have a big industrial snake, right? So when the next day come, Joe didn't get much sleep. I think he went to bed like three o'clock. We had to get there for eight. Josh, we had a hot dog. It was good. What are you making? I thought we were gonna go buy the noodles and stuff. You, got, you, you can't wait for that? I'll eat right now. I could eat a little tomorrow, you know? Okay, go ahead and make what you may make then. Probably do the noodles another day, guys. Yeah, so we went to the church. They gave the test. Guess who failed the test? The one that didn't study. He said he didn't care. So they said, no, I'll give you your certificate to show that you passed the test to become members. Joe said, he don't okay. He don't want to be no member anyway. Later on, they still end up giving him the certificate. Like a week later, they call all of us. Give up. They, they, are they gonna block you from joining? I think even if you were an axe murderer, they wouldn't block you from joining. They want the money, right? 
So, <laughs> Joe the rail up back there. So anyways, um, we became members of the church. I think we're still on their roster. I wish they would take us off because we don't go there. From Christmas 2016, I stopped going to church and I'll probably never, ever, 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 ever go back. Unless somebody's getting baptized, like a baby, not a big grown adult, a baby getting baptized and somebody invited me or what else? Um, somebody getting married, I'll go to church or somebody's marriage and somebody passed away and I, I stopped going to funerals. I made a rule, after my mom died, my, my dad and my sister and my brothers made a rule that they wouldn't attend any more funerals, they don't care who. I attended a lot of my mom's friends' funerals when they passed, I'm not going to no more. Nunca mas, ya cabo. I'm done. Why should I have to go and then people didn't talk to me? Since mommy died, majority of her friends, only two people stay in contact with me. Them two people are gonna get all my love and care, not the rest gonna call me, the hell? I'm done with church. I'm not done with God. But I'm done with church. You guys get you guys get the memo? You guys, check out my Amazon influencers page. When, whenever you're gonna buy something from Amazon, even if it's a bottle of aspirin. Anybody still buy aspirin? Joshua, do you think aspirin is still a thing? What? Aspirin. Yeah. People still buy that? Aspirin? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I assume so. In, when I was growing up in Belize, aspirin, the brand was Aspro. I mean, it, it, baby that, aspirin helps with uh, staving off heart attacks. Oh yeah, for heart attacks and stuff, huh? I usually buy ibuprofen or Tylenol, that's what I'm asking. Acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Huh? Just show what you making. Hot dogs and fries. Hmm, oh, sounds good. Joshua did a couple of mukbang with me. Some idiot come and ask about Joshua fingernails. Are those acrylics? Come make a stubby with it, then you'll know if they're acrylics. That's what I want to tell you. Somebody came and, and took up for you, Josh, and go, This is so sad because Barbara has explained and addressed this over and over again. That this is his real nails. No, he's not gay. And if he were, who cares? Who cares? We love everybody up in here. So. It's been so long since I've heard something about that. Uh, do you have a few of them that's broken right now? Yeah. Uh, show, show, show your hand over here. Uh, oh yeah, the thumb. Every now and again they broke. Hmm? Mm -hmm. He doesn't cry because oh, I have a broken nail. They go back in like a month. Hmm? Show them how long they're long right now. They're not even long right now. Uh, they even want to if I do cocaine. No. <laughs> Drugs? Are you crazy? I got money for that. You're crazy. And then that lead to all kind of other death no i don't want to die because i like my nose on my face that's pretty cool <laughs> I, like I like my nose, nose on my face joe joshua Ugh. you know how how great god is mm. the way he designed the human body do you know that if he had put our nose on top of our head turned upward the first rain we would drown What's the big deal if a boy has long hair? Just used to have long hair till he was like six. What's the deal if they have long nails? What's the big deal if they want to wear a frock? I don't care. Because back in the olden days, they didn't have pants. Man no. used to wear long smocks and frocks, right? Dudes used to wear heels back in the days for I think height. Remember Prince? <laughs> That's not even far back in the day. Just consider for a minute, make I finish my show. I'm telling them about my Amazon. I taped a bunch of Amazon stuff to their boy. This, this chair is going to be hot with this fabric. Who? Hmm? This fabric on this chair. Oh, your biker's thing? Okay. Can you see Joshita? Come, Joshita. Let me move a little bit more. So, Josh, we were just talking about them preachers, and I know you always get worked up. <laughs> Not fond of them, no. Mm -hmm. Did you like the priest that we had when you guys were little, uh, Father yeah. Keith? He... he I, I've never liked church. I've never mm -hmm. enjoyed going to church, but mm -hmm. I didn't hate Father Keith because he felt, you know, real. Like he actually believed in all this. He came to the hospital when I gave birth to Jada. He laid hands on me when that religion did not approve of him laying hands on me, the Anglican religion, because Jada was breached. Uh. Right after the week before she came, he came to the hospital. And when that stupid church member was treating me like crap because remember when that lady took Jada, the nurse? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was <clears> crazy. Yeah. Jada was taken. Yeah. She was taken. <laughs> 
She um We're in Liam they, Neeson, we can't get her back. They tell you they, we don't we don't have a particular set of no, skills. No, we don't. Well, they tell you that, that no. when you have the baby, all the hospital staff is gonna transport the baby via the, the, ba um, the basket, right? The, the, yeah, the basket. The basket. Yeah. They don't carry them hmm. in their hands because you could trip and fall with the baby. And so I waited till the baby started to cry to go use the bathroom for my first usage of the bathroom, right? To go pee. And by the time I sat on the toilet, the baby stopped crying. I was like, oh, that's, I didn't even pee. That's terrifying. That was very terrifying. I ran out, and when I got out there, she was gone, not in the bassinet. I'm like, oh, God. I ran out into the hallway. Somebody stole my baby. And so there was a nurse, and she had her back turned, and you could tell, like, she was holding a baby, and she was, like, in a doorway. She wasn't, like, running off with the baby or anything. It was just, like, maybe the nurse's station, just standing in that, that doorway. But her back that. turned. She didn't tell me. She could come and say, Mom, I'm a nurse. Let me show you my ID. I don't care who sees me half naked when you're in the hospital. That's what they're there they for. They see you all the time. Who cares? <laughs> so just come and identify yourself. And then why you take the baby outside of the bassinet, right? So I was hysterical. As you should be. And then... Uh, Father Keith showed up at the same time. This this is a priest in his late seventies. Drove all the way from Whittier, far away. He didn't used to live out here where he um, Preach. what, preached. And so he came and he right away, you know, okay, that's the baby, blah 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 blah, and got the baby back for me, calmed me down. And the stupid um, member of the church, older lady, Karen. We're gonna call her Karen. Her name was Marina. Most church women are Karen. Oh. She was just like, oh, Barbara, oh, do calm down. She's a nurse. I know her. She's worked here for, you know, 10 That's years. That's cool that you know her, You know her, but I don't, I don't know, know she. Exactly. And for that matter, Marina, I don't freaking know you. Exactly. Oh, I went off. She what? got cussed out in front of the priest. Ooh. In front of the priest. Then at that time, I know I have one blood type, right? Daddy said he have the same blood type I have. He doesn't. Right? <laughs> so they come, and I don't know what blood types they had. I really didn't know. I thought I knew your blood types well, at that own point. Egg? Huh? On my own egg or a pause? Oh, pause. Oh, pause. Okay. So I thought I knew their blood types, but I think when they were born, Joshua and Jory, the doctor probably came to the door and go, oh, your baby is positive. Right? They didn't tell me your type. They told me your RH. RH negative or RH positive. Hmm. And so they have to tell me that because I'm RH negative, so they have to come and give me the the Rogam injection so they could protect the next pregnancy. Hmm. So I think that's what the doctor said, but I didn't remember. So I thought you guys were all O positive. Because Joe said he not O pause, right? When if, if, if that was O pause, would we all be O pause or O negative or whatever? If I'm O negative and that is O positive, you guys can only be O, but uh -huh. it would be either positive or negative. Okay, got it. All right, but you can only be O. You can't be nothing else but O. Right. And so the nurse, the, the doctor, or somebody came in and said the baby is B or whatever the, the other letter is, right? We'll put them pick they put them pick the business out there it's either a or b pick one and so i'm like what <laughs> but that's not possible and then the nurse said why and i said because i'm oh my husband oh and so she said no you guys are never going to know what the real um letter is we, we mix it up so she said you know stuff happens <laughs> Bitch, you got me effed up, bitch. I'm like, y'all better come bring somebody up in here to test this baby against her daddy. So I told you, you better get, oh, it was drama filled when Jada was born. First of all, she was breached the week before. Then she turned and she came out, thank you, God. No C-section necessary because I can't get the paralytics and stuff like that. So anyways, the preacher was there. The priest was there. Thank you, Father. He dead, no. Yeah. Father, he dead. Yeah. He was older though, anyway. He was older. He was already uh -huh. old when he was back then. Yeah. yeah. So then they drew they drew blood from not from Jada Heal no more, not brand new baby blood. They drew from here. The guy was good though. The guy was really good. She didn't even cry. Oh. They, Joe came because he was at home with the boys. The Kaiser was like a few minutes away from here. Yeah, it's Joe right came. There. They stabbed him. They came back. They did it stat. And turn out the baby have the same blood type like the daddy. I said, who the hell tell you you <laughs> the all positive? My ma. Then Belize people like to tell them pick them they're old. Because <laughs> you know what? A lot of black people are old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it goes by race sometimes too with the blood type. I assume that's a factor, yeah. Yeah. Like sickle cell and all that. Yeah. So it's like, it's crazy. But Jada's birth was drama filled, child. And she's been drama ever since. 
I recorded this mukbang a few days ago. Today is Thursday, September the 1st. The story that I told you guys in the middle of the video about the neighbor across the street and how the guy parked over their driveway, that happened on Saturday, August the 20th at night. So the guy moved his car Sunday morning. They didn't call the police or anything. So fast forward to Wednesday, I was doing a live event when Jada and Joshua were leaving and the, the guy, the husband, told them that his young son that's only nine years old had a massive stroke the evening before so that would have been Tuesday Tuesday evening at four o'clock and they were in the hospital in Loma Linda so we've gone three times since then to see this baby we call him a baby because he's the sweetest kid they moved into that house in 2010 two years later they had Gio his name is Johnny but Gio for short and he's like the most uber friendly kid all the kids on the street are kind of rude we don't say nothing to them they don't say nothing to us but if we're leaving and we're like tired and you know forsaken and just really out of it and he's outside your mood's gonna change instantly because he's like hi hi barb hi joe hi jada and then he loves to tell jada his whole business with us it's just a hide with jada it's his whole business so this is a kid that's like family to us and i've done a couple of live events maybe you've seen them at the page i've left them up asking you guys to pray with us and you guys have been praying with us and I really appreciate it. I don't know what the future holds for this baby, but I know who holds the future. All right. So the reports are not good. That's all I'm going to say. The doctors just keep bringing, bringing bad report after bad report. And we're not trying to live in oblivion and, you know, try to deny facts and stuff like that. But we just keep praying unceasingly and speaking life into him and asking God to change the situation like only God can and hoping for the best, all right? So I'm gonna wrap this video up because we're gonna go to the hospital yet again. And like I said, we don't know what the future is, okay? That's all I can say. If you like this video, go ahead, hit the like button. Um, don't forget to subscribe, and of course, pick up a copy of one of my books. Thanks, guys. This is the best.